Hello, hello, hello. Finally back recording a new episode, Kim. Ready? I'm uber ready. You're uber ready. Yeah. Yeah. And for those watching again, we're in brand new studios yet again. Yes. Yeah. With a nice view of the Oslo Fjord and uh, nice buildings. And we're also looking at Severin Surly. Yeah. Uh, very nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, we're excited too. Um, so, yeah. Severin started his college career at Gardner Webb University in North Carolina. And as a result of his great development on the soccer pitch, he ended up with transferring to Syracuse University in New York and the well-known ACC conference. Severin, welcome yet again. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's uh, nice to see you in person. We've met before, of course. We haven't yeah. met all our students, but I've been lucky to meet you and known you and the family for quite some time. Yeah, uh, it's been some years. It's been... Uh, uh, an interesting process to follow from where you were, you know, 17 and just thinking about, hey, maybe the US could be an option. And your dad contacted me uh, as requesting a little bit of info yeah. until, well, now we're here. You got a nice job. You're, you're changing jobs soon and uh, have a great uh, degree in your back pocket. Amazing experiences on the pitch. And it's it's nice to see it come full circle again. Uh, how do you feel coming back? Oh, it's uh, it's good, you know. Coming back home, it's it's your home place. Like it's something else. But looking back at it, it was four and a half amazing years. I wouldn't have been without it, no doubt. By now, like definitely the best years of my life. It um, it's good experience moving far, far away from family and friends, and feel a little bit uh, insecure about like taking huge decisions and stuff like that. So, but four and a half years was enough for me. It's good to be back home and uh, try something else. Yeah, S and start uh, the, the real life as we, we call it. Yeah, be, become a grown up. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll, we'll go back to the, to the beginning. And I remember we started the dialogue and you were quite, uh, I would say early on in the process compared to others uh, that were playing at the level you were at, because you were at the Norwegian top uh, club, Ström Skutsa. Um, uh, Ödegård, obviously the, the one yeah, kid from Norway, that's true. that's his club. So yep. that he's kind of put that club on the map and you, you were going through the ranks, well known for being a producer of a lot of young talents and giving talents a chance to play as well. But obviously hard to... To, to make it up to a first team in, in the top yeah. top division. You you got the chance to train with them and kinda yeah. had a chance at that? Yeah, it was it was some good years. Like I played with players like Martin Odegor, Burr and Selena, Evil Fossum, like the guys who can say they really made it. And uh, for me that was a great experience to play at the junior um, club at Stramskutze. I played all my youth years there and uh, yeah it was it was good. But you probably, maybe that comes from your dad uh, was interested in this and obviously you as well, but many at that club probably just having their eyes set on, I'm going to make it here. Mm -hmm. But you, from a young age, I think even maybe in middle school, <coughs> were thinking, hey, there's a there's a plan B that's quite good or, or maybe what might be, be my plan A, uh, which it turned out to be, which yeah. was to go to the States. Uh, wh why... Uh, why, why do you think about that so early? Uh, that's a good question. Um, to be fair, I'm I'm not even sure. Like I remember my dad told me like it's possible to go to the states and take a degree while playing soccer, and I had a uh, a lot of fun in Strømskutse and it was a great team. But I also saw that like players at the same age was uh, further ahead of me when it comes to playing professional. And I figured that if I want to make it, I need to move on because like I came to like a certain sp space, like where, where I didn't, I feel like I, I couldn't go further at Stremskutse. So I had to sub, uh, switch clubs. And then I was like, if I go to the States, I get a degree 
and I can play at a high level compared to staying in Norway and maybe get to a second division club and then study on the side. I felt like it would give me more going to the United States, learn a language and try a different culture. So that was actually why. And I hadn't given up on the dream of becoming a soccer player. Uh, I still want to go like get drafted in the MLS. That was my goal going over there. But, you know, stuff changes when you get older and older and you you start figuring out what's more important to you. Yeah, but it's... Uh, and, and the beauty of it is that you can continue yeah, yeah, both. Yeah. And, you know, the, the degree was important for you. I remember in the meeting we had, which, by the way, I mean, we're, we're sitting looking at a nice view here but the view in the boardroom that we met <laughs> at in uh, you yeah, know in downtown true. oslo uh, it was like an amazing backdrop with uh, i think it was raining and sunny at the same time with like yeah. a big rainbow and it was just lightning it was just like a fairy tale uh, does this even exist and we i was trying to, to concentrate talking about college <laughs> and uh, looking at the, the the view behind me which was uh, unreal uh but that was the start for for a very n nice relationship with you and your your, yeah. your, your dad and uh, who was heavily involved in the process too. And we we saw you play a couple of times uh, at some tournaments, and it was nice to kind of see the the player you were. And you had a lot of those key ingredients, I feel, to to fit into mm -hmm. uh, you know the college style of play with, with your pace, with your skills one v one, which for many college coaches, uh, especially for the attacking players, quite important. Uh, uh, so it's really exciting to start working with you in that process. And uh, you, you came to a showcase, you did well there, um, and you, you had quite a few options. Uh, and eventually the, it turned out in what was, a, I would say, quite a complicated case because of uh, some things with academics and some 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 grades and some SAT score and uh, to requirements for certain schools, etc. Uh, but we got you there in the end. Yeah. But, but maybe not exactly as we thought <laughs> initially going into the process. How, how was how was your uh, recruiting journey uh, or that part of the process? It was uh, it was tough. I had uh, a these like I had a lot of good options. But due to the academic part, I couldn't go to the best schools because when you look at different ACC schools, like, for example, Virginia Tech or Syracuse or schools like that, they have a certain limit you have to reach on the SAT score. And my SAT score wasn't good enough for that. So I had to go to a smaller school. And then I started talking to a school called Garner Webb who is a smaller Division One club down in Carolina, who told me, like, you can come to us. Um, you can sit out one year. You can practice, but you're not allowed to play games. And uh, But you can play games from year two when you show that you can do good in both academic and training field, um, which obviously was no problem. So it was a, it was a long year waiting to finally start playing games but also for me it was good because my english was not good not good at all um so i guess like it, it turned out well like i can't complain now but i remember looking back at it uh it was it was a tough year because i knew like i would uh, help the team if i was able to uh so i just used that year as a motivation i trained harder than ever and uh, I was just ready to show everyone my second year, like, I have some business here. Yeah. But, it, you know, it is, uh, we, we won't go into the the, the the thick rule book of Division One or Division Two NCAA college soccer. And it's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, you have to sometimes overcome those obstacles. And you, here we had a school that uh, was willing to invest quite a big scholarship in you, despite, hey, you can't really play games for us in the yeah, first year, yeah, but you yeah. will pay you to train. And that, that was, uh, if you look at it like that, it was a softer start for you. And of course, when you're not playing and you're just sitting on the sideline, 
rooting for your teammates dying to play that yeah. that hurts any a, any athlete would know uh, i think um but it was a an important step for you and you, you did well with with your academics and, yeah, yeah. and obviously english it improves by the day yeah, when, you, yeah, when you're actually over there so yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, it, i'm i'm impressed and i remember at the time like the resilience you showed in well, you knew that your English wasn't great, but <laughs> yeah. you, still, well, you True knew though. that that was quite important th- yeah, to yeah. Go, go to a country like the U.S. and um, you, yeah, you just took it and, and you you left home and, and the safe environment uh, yeah. and, and Norway behind. Uh, you learn a lot from that. A lot. Like, just by going to another country, you learn a lot. I remember telling my, my teammates, like... If you hear me say something wrong, if I pronounce it wrong, or I just use a wrong form, or just let me know, tell me, and just so I can learn. You're not like mobbing me or anything. Like you just give me a hint, like this is how you should pronounce it. And uh, I remember one of my roommates. We were four. I had two Norwegian roommates and one from German Germany, and uh, he took me under his wing and just like every time I said something wrong, he's like come on, it's not like, you don't say it like that. You say it like this or this or this. Yeah, and how was that experience for you then? Because um, <clears throat> I remember from my um, former school, there was a ton of Swedes mm-hmm. and they were all sticking together and their English didn't really evolve as other internationals did that were more by themselves. And at Gardner Webb, like we're probably going to talk about it, but there was a ton of Norwegians there. Yeah. It, did you, it, it did was you feel a, like that was a... Did you guys talk Norwegian to each other all the time, or did you guys have to talk English uh, to try and develop that? Um, we did both. Like when we were with people who didn't speak Norwegian around us, we would always speak English. Yeah. Uh, but when we were alone, we would speak Norwegian. Yeah. Like that was like a big difference from from Garner Web to Syracuse because I lived with a Swede in Syracuse, but we only spoke English yeah. the whole time. We like. I think I could count on my fingers like how many times I heard him speak Swedish. Yeah. So uh, it all depends on where you're at, I feel like. Yeah. I think there's, uh, for many coaches, put in a pretty strict policy that, yep. uh, hey, no, it's kind of like at the poker table, yep. English only, guys. Yep. You know, it's uh, no cheating here. Uh, and th- that's important. But uh, if it's too much for your own language, yeah, you don't, get out of the comfort zone maybe to 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 you know, obviously you've got to practice your english in order to improve it yeah. um but yeah it probably was a nice little breather for you sometimes oh, to just uh true. speak speak the the, the the mother tongue um yeah but there's also a big difference coming from you know the the background you had here mm-hmm. uh, in norway and the environment to coming over to uh, the south of the sta- of, of the U.S. You know, the I'm surprised you you don't have a more thick uh, southern accent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe because you learned from a German. Yeah, but, uh, probably. Uh, you could have been, hey, Al, how's how's it going? Yeah, could have been like this. Uh, yeah, that would have been gr- that would have been great. Uh, How y'all no. doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like everyone down there, they, they speak like that. It's yeah. it's crazy to to hear the difference. And I still have a pretty strong Norwegian accent, but like, I remember they said like, yeah, you should start using your, the word y'all. Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't even know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and uh, it was the South, but uh, I didn't uh, change my accent, luckily. Well, Kim has lost his Southern <laughs> accent as well. Yeah. Um, you were in I'm South. I'm still eating my grits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but I was uh, down the road from you, yeah. you know, in South Carolina, just across the border, and we we played against Garden Web uh, several times, and uh, it wasn't a rivalry per se, but it was still, you know, you you, you were familiar with with the school, yeah. and uh, wanted to to you wanted to, to win, beat. yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely wanted to win. There's a lot of schools in that area yeah. that you w- want to beat, of course, but uh, um, but how how did you find uh, North Carolina? It's quite hot, humid. You know, that's another thing to, when you come over. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it was different. Like playing s- football or soccer, it was like, it was way too hot. Like I remember I, I can't breathe. 
Uh, I remember especially my first game for Gardner Web. We played in Wilmington. It was so warm. I could only play 45 minutes and I asked to be subbed out because I couldn't breathe. I was just laying there like, like yeah, I, I had no air in my lungs. So uh, it was uh, definitely hard, but it was the same every preseason. The first month, you just had to get used to it. And we even practiced like early, early mornings just to get out of the sun and the, the humidity. Um, but after a while, you start getting used to it. Yeah, and, uh, start climatizing and it's yeah yeah you, you get used to it but it's definitely harder than playing in new york yeah so like it's it's a different but um it was all right after a month yeah because obviously the your first season there in 2016 mm -hmm. you started every single game you scored three goals and had three assists you ended up uh, being on the team of the season freshman mm -hmm. And then also nominated to freshman of the year of the entire school, which was yeah. a great season. And it probably maybe wouldn't have happened if you didn't have that first year where you got to practice every single day and, and only get to sort of settle in for that year yeah. and get used to your teammates and get used to your coach. So taking that year off from actually playing games maybe helped you having a flying start off to the your freshman season there. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Like, I think it helped me a lot just having that one year of experience, like getting used to how much they actually train and how tough the the weeks are because you play a lot of games and they have a different training regime than back home in Norway. Like, it's 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 harder. And we weren't the best team, but we ran a lot. So, like, we... I remember every single preseason, even if it was like before spring or before season, we had our first running test uh, midnight when uh, before the, we could start practicing. <laughs> so every time... No time to waste there. No time to waste. So we started 0, 0, 0, 0 with the yo-yo tests. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> oh, that's pretty hardcore. Yeah. yeah, that's determined. <laughs> How are you supposed to sleep after that? It's like yeah. the heart is just... Uh, did, 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 did. Uh, at least not so hot and humid at midnight. No, way better. Yeah. But we did it inside though. But yeah. <laughs> still, it was. Uh, I remember those times. But that's that's great to look back at though. Like it's it's memories. And like if you ask me, then I would be like, oh, why are we doing this? Yeah. But uh, now it's just fun to look back at it. Uh, you create some bonds and memories with uh, with good friends because you're doing it together. Yeah, and, yeah, everything. Uh, but it, that that is a. Uh, you have to uh, be used to a different uh, mindset when it comes to training definitely, and definitely. I think from most other countries coming in there it's uh, not not at all the different levels but uh, and there are different coaching styles and but yeah i think the one thing that uh, coaches will always say well we should not get beat on our fitness level and and yeah. things we really can control right uh, it's spot on yeah I want to talk to you about season two, uh, your, your second year, yeah. sophomore season, which was uh, a stellar season. One of the most impressive I think we've seen uh, because the team was doing okay. Not It was pretty good season, I would say, but still uh, I think you managed to get the most out of your season uh, from an individual point of view. With with all the goals and assists you managed mm. to just to add to the board, uh, I think eleven goals, seven assists, and you weren't even. I don't think you took pen PKs, penalties, nope. or no set pieces. corner kick, nothing. No. So this was just from open play. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was a good year for me. We had uh, we had a good team compared to other years. Um, we had some fellow Norwegians of mine that was extremely good as well so um yeah like that's it It was a good season like yeah. it was eight eight wins seven losses and two draws so, that's it's a, the it's thing. A, so we were not dominating uh, anything. it's like an you know middle of the pack type of season yeah yeah so but your individual performances you know national you were national team of the week mm -hmm. a couple of times you scored some really important game winners against yeah. good good opposition um 
because uh, it wasn't like uh, four of the goals came in a match you won eight nothing. It no, was no. Uh, like consistently in every game, really yeah. contributing and, and important ones. Yeah, that was the thing. And like when I look back at it, I see like I scored against the teams that were supposed to beat us, and that makes us makes it any like it makes it better than not just scoring against the teams that you should score against. You, I think you you told me that the best memory you've had on on the soccer pitch yeah. is from that season. Can you walk us through that game? Uh, you know, and, and yeah. everything around that. Yeah, it was a it was a great game. We uh, we traveled down to Furman, and that's in in South Carolina. Yeah. So it's kind of a local. It was like an hour hour and a half. Yeah, maybe, it was pretty something like that. pretty close, not far away, and uh, we were not close to being ranked we were like we were a decent d1 team nothing special but we had a good team and we were off to play Furman at Furman they were ranked top 10 in the nation uh, they only had one loss uh, so we were like okay we're gonna go in there do as good as we can try to get one point or like do as good as we can and they had scheduled like a mo uh, the game as a memorial game because they lost some uh, players a couple of years ago due to an accident. So they, they scheduled that game because they thought this will be an easy win because you always want to win those games. So I remember the stadium was packed. Uh, we started the game um, and people started roasting. You know how it is. Like They figure out your name, searching you up on the roster, finding your sister and mom's name like they're they're college students yep. and i remember we going up one zero uh, then we go up two zero then we go up three zero and we we're just we we're just flying we we're all over the place um magnus Moldier, another norwegian scored a banger i had one goal and we scored off uh, a corner kick and then they started getting pks uh, I th I don't remember the halftime score. It was three three one because they got a PK they got just a PK. before halftime. Yeah, and then they started, and then we go into the halftime like we're super happy. We just need to stay focused. Like we can beat the ranked team, that would like be huge for a school like Garner Webb. And then they got their first PK score that one, and then we come to the second half. They got another PK. Yeah, like nine minutes in, fifty yeah. fourth minute, they get another PK. Yeah, like dodgy PK call or like it was even like probably some of them were PKs, but like I really doubt. Like I re remember, not every single one of them was a PK. I'm definitely sure about that. Um, and then they got another PK, I think, or they scored an open goal. Yeah, they they scored two goals uh, within fifteen minutes, so it was yeah. three three all at uh, three three at uh, after sixty minutes. Yeah. For the listeners, uh, Kim is just remembering this from from his head because he always keeps the scores and the minutes <laughs> in his head. I'm an oracle when it comes to. Yeah. Uh, you want to tell me that it was 1,017 <laughs> fans at the stadium? Yeah, I could tell you that. Something It'll like that. Probably be something along those lines. Yeah. Felt like it was even more yeah. because they were all over us, especially when we were up like 3 0. They were roasting us. And especially me because I played on the side. It looked like I had like a dyed hair because I was like blonde, little bit blonde, skinny legs, roasting me. Yeah. But like you know, I I think that's just fun. So I like used it as motivation. And they kept going. Number ten, you have the skinniest legs I ever seen. Number ten, do the don't skip leg day. Number yeah, ten, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And like, what happened to your hair? And yeah, it was a lot of fun. And like, honestly, I don't care about it. I just turn around and smile and. Probably shouldn't have done that because then they know, oh, he hears us. <laughs> yeah. Kept going. Um, it was 3-3. Three, three, and one of our freshman scores, I think, Oscar Wang, another Norwegian. And we were up 4-3. And right before, I, I think it was 80th minute or something, they scored another one. Was it a PK? Yeah, it was, it a, was PK. a PK. They scored three <laughs> goals on PKs. And we were like, I even asked the ref, Are you? did you graduate Furman? And he gave me a yellow card for it. Yeah. I was so pissed. I was like, are you serious? Three PKs. Are you just trying for them to win the game? And then it goes to overtime. And we were like, we were happy with 4-4. Four, four, not going to lie. Like, this is a good team. 
And then uh, I remember we was the first extra time, and if you score in an overtime there, the game ends. Yeah. It's golden goal. It's, it's golden proper, goal, basically. It's for entertainment yeah. purposes. Yeah. I love that about the US. Oh, it's yeah. the best. It's the best. When you win, though. Yeah, when, when you, you lose, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, days, yeah, yeah. that's the worst. <laughs> but then um, Oscar Wang gets the ball through along with the goalie, but the goalie takes it, but it is a, like a kind of misunderstanding between the center back and the goalie. So he plays it out. And I get the ball on like 30 meters. The goal is open, but I had to curl it around the, the goalie. So I remember not even thinking. I just shot the ball and I see it goes in. And I'm thinking, what just happened? And I heard like everyone screaming. So I figured, oh, the game is over. So I running to the away, like to the home fans that had been screaming on me all day, sliding on my knees, just standing with my arms out. Just come on, give it to me, give it to me. And uh, it's like, it, it's, you probably think it's super cocky, but like when they have been going at you the whole game, you kind of just waiting for an opportunity to get back at them. And when you score that game winning goal, it's, it's the best feeling I ever had on a soccer field. Yeah. Because when you're not supposed to beat a team like that and you actually do it, and it meant a lot for the whole team because we were like, we were underdogs in basically every single game. So beating a ranked team, it was, it was crazy. So yeah, um, definitely my best uh, memory from the US when it comes to soccer. Yeah, wish I could have been there that uh, that fall evening in uh, Furman, uh, South Carolina. It's in Greenville, very nice city, by the way, uh, to, to see that major upset and uh, see you there on your knees celebrating. Amazing. Uh, it's okay to do that, I think. In this, uh, I mean, this is about college and fans, and that's I think uh, that's part of the game. Yep. So I love that. Um, but you had a really good season, no doubt about it, and... Mm. You remember we were speaking and you were thinking that, hey, I had that dream of MLS and trying to make it there. That's mm -hmm. one of the big reasons why I came and you kind of felt that uh, I, I need to try and do that still. But probably for you, Garden Web, then you kind of thought that that wasn't the right place. You needed the team to be better. Or what, what was your reasoning behind uh, that? Because you, I mean, you made a lot of friends. You you had a good time there. You, yeah. It, it's it's a difficult thing to think about, but of course, with that soccer passion and dream of yours, um, maybe it wasn't the right place. Was that the decision for you in the end? Yeah, it was definitely a tough decision because, you, like you said, your friends are there. You're comfortable. You know that you're gonna play every single game. You know you're important. But uh, I also knew that if you want to become good at something, when you feel comfortable, you have to step out of the comfort zone to like take the next step. And I felt like after that season, I'm not I'm not sure how to top it. Like how how can I do better next year? Um, and I figured like if you want to be if I wanted to be noticed like by MLS teams and. I felt like I had to go to a better conference. Uh, Big South is a good conference, but I felt like I've done my job here and I need to prove it somewhere else. Prove that I can do do uh, good as well in other conferences. Yeah. So I remember, I remember telling my mom and dad the summer before uh, my second season, I told them like, if I do well this season, um, I'm probably going to look into transferring schools to take the to be able to take the next step. Uh, and it it went well with the goals I scored and assists and down in America like people and coaches and stuff care a lot about stats. Like compared to Norway I feel like they're more uh focused on who scores goals, um how many assists did you have? How many corners did you score? Like they care more. Like they care a lot about it compared to the open play, and it's probably gonna be like from school to school. But 
in general, I feel like stats is a lot of the American soccer. Yeah, especially for forwards and attacking players, yeah, yeah, where it's like you you definitely. need to put points up on the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's it. I think the the stats. It's it's an easier way to get noticed because you're always talked about. Then you know you can have a really good midfielder, but that is the role is not to score goals, but you know. It, that doesn't sell as well no. to talk about that. And it's it's a lot about looking at, uh, well, if you can score goals, if you can do assists, well, mm-hmm. that obviously means you're a good player, but it's you have to actually watch a lot of the games and and, and maybe scout them yourself to really figure out that, yeah, this this one is really, really good. But, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and, you know, for a defensive center midfielder, you can't really expect too many, too much stats. Oh, that's the thing, though. But I, I remember, like, before every game, the opponent always does like a scouting report on you, like on the team. And uh, it was always like, this guy has scored this many goals, this many assists. And uh, like the fun part when you're not professional, but like it's still when you get attention, like before every game, they always have like on player to watch when they go through some clips and showing like the people who are watching the game online like from previous games and telling telling about like players like yeah what they're good at and uh yeah basically to take all of that out of stats yeah so um uh, it was cool but that was that a difference from coming from from let's say strom scouts and the and the player and the analysis before games yeah, and yeah. I, I imagine you did quite a lot of video and, and things a but lot. maybe the stats weren't as uh, available no uh, like at, at, it, yeah, level. in Strömskot, so we cared more about like playing as a team. Like we focused more on our team and how we played. But I felt in America in general, like both uh, Garner Webb and Syracuse, we cared a lot about the opponent. We did so much analysis on the um, on the opponent or <laughs> on the opponent uh, on like what type of style do they play? Are they playing what formation? Are they scoring a lot of uh, set pieces? Are they scoring from open play? Who is their main man? And like, I honestly knew every single little detail about every player. Like, I even knew what kind of color the right back shoe was. Like, it was it was crazy. And uh, I feel like that summarizes a lot about the the culture of America when it comes to soccer. Yeah, I, I remember that from my time as well. We always had the sheet with the number of the player, yeah. what they were good at, what they weren't that good of. And I remember we, we played a team and they one of them on the opposing team had forgotten his sheet. So they were in the locker room and we, we, we got a hold of that one. And it said for number three, myself, it said, just get him angry because he always <laughs> complains to the ref. He always talks <laughs> to the ref. He always spends so much time talking to the ref. And that, of course, me, but... uh yeah. Um, Accurate description, Charles. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm not shy to say that. I, I spent a lot of time talking to the ref, but I always also got a lot of good friends uh, <laughs> over this time because I always spend a lot of time talking to the refs. A lot Amazing. of good refereeing friends. Yeah, a lot of good refereeing friends and a lot of enemies out there that probably still remembers me. But yeah, I, I remember that as well. Always looking at um, our coach was always like, "Yeah, drills for you, left back there." Not tall at all. <laughs> Just play long ball on drills, and you'll you'll beat him in every header. And then, and that was it. And he had like yeah, it was five foot six and weighed one forty pounds. <laughs> You're gonna beat him in everything, drills. Yeah. yeah, confidence boost ahead of the game. Good, good, uh, good buttons to push on there. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. But you ended up making the decision to transfer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was part of that process to actually help you with that move, uh, and then we're uh, looking at yeah what's the, what's the next step and we you'd kind of put up a list of dream you talked about conferences and there's you know in division 1 there's more than 200 teams there's uh, probably seven or eight in each conference there's a lot of different conferences but uh, the one that always kept popping up with you probably because you had uh, ACC Atlantic Coast Conference interest from from Virginia Tech after the showcase, but then in the end couldn't make that work. 
so that was always in the back of your mind. And I think for a lot of the ones wanting to push on to MLS, th there's a lot of players from that conference that gets picked up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that was the ultimate goal. Yeah, yeah. I remember I was uh, a little bit disappointed that I couldn't go to the ACC when I first got over there. But uh, so it was it was still in the back of my mind when like when we had a good chat mid season like what should I do if I keep performing and uh, remember talking to you like after like do you think I have a chance to go to the ACC because I honestly didn't want to go to another conference because I felt personally that that was definitely the best conference and it would fit me as a player. Um, so um, yeah, when I made that decision, we we started talking about what what type of schools do you think um, you would like to go to, and then we we figured like Virginia Tech was still an option. Um, so the head coach there called me and told me like we're still interested. Uh, what I didn't know that he was he was actually watching a couple of my games live when we played uh, during the season. And uh, that gave me, like, that made me doubt, like, should I go Syracuse or Virginia Tech? Because he wouldn't have watched those games if he really, really, like, he had to really, really want me to be, to go there and watch me play. So I remember I was, it was a tough decision. But, um, yeah, I also talked to different schools like uh, New Hampshire, Cal Poly, um, yeah, I can't remember anyone else right now. Yeah, but good, like, good name schools. Good here. names, like, but because they were not ACC, I kind of was like, uh, like I excluded them. Yeah. But um, maybe they were even better teams than the ACC schools. But in my mind, I had just figured out I want to play ACC because, like, I remember playing Clemson away, and just coming to that stadium, see their fans. Uh, play that team who played amazing football. Like it was, it was crazy. They were so good. They beat us five zero. Like no problem. And uh, it was then I was like, all right, I know what what division I want to play in, what uh, conference I want to go to the ACC if it's possible. And then uh, yeah, we had that chat, and when it come down to it, it was between Syracuse and Virginia Tech. Um. That was a, it was a tough decision. I remember, yeah. I, I had to think a lot and talk to different people. But, uh, yeah, I felt... I had a heart for Syracuse. I don't know why, but just, like, it felt right. So, uh, I think it was, like, two days after I got my release from the coach. I was like, okay, I can go on a visit. But I have to choose between the two of them. Who should I visit? And uh, then uh, the assistant coach, Yuka Maslin for Syracuse, called me and told me they had watched so many games online, uh, told me a lot of, like, my style of playing. I could really tell that they, they actually done the job. They watched me. They told me, like, this is what we need for next season. Uh, you fit as that player. Um, you will get the opportunity here. Um he also said uh, we're going to Spain for spring break. That also <laughs> impacted a lot. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> One week down in Spain, we were like going to play Atletico Madrid's uh, youth um, team. We were going to stay in Madrid for four or five days and Barcelona for three days. It was just like, yeah, it was the, the it not, not the reason, but it was, it was affecting me a lot. The package of it. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. everything. And then he said, if you want, I can fly you up tomorrow. You can stay here for the, the weekend. We'll show you the school. You'll talk to the coach. We'll uh, show you everything, and you can see if you like it. And uh, then it was like, all right. So I remember calling my dad, and I was like, okay, I have the chance to fly up to Syracuse tomorrow, or I can go visit Virginia Tech tomorrow. What should I do? It's so tough. <laughs> I, I I don't know what I should do. And he was like, uh, put your phone away, go for a run, just think, and at the end of the day, 
just follow what you think is right. And then I um, pick up the phone and call Yuka Maslin at Syracuse and said like, okay, let's go, I'm coming tomorrow. And um, yeah, I flew up, had to ask teachers to uh, extend two exams. And uh, normally they wouldn't do it, but I was like, I was begging because I, I, this is a huge decision for me. Um, and they were like, yeah, we rescheduled it, sat on the plane, got up there. It was freezing cold. I felt like I was back, <laughs> back home in Norway. It's uh, on the outside of New York. Um, we got to campus and it's like, it was huge. I, I couldn't believe my own eyes. So the, the team was actually training when I got up there and I remember going into one of the training facilities and it was something else. I honestly don't think Norwegian, like if you're a Norwegian citizen, you can't uh, imagine what met you there because when you're going over there, people are like, oh, so you, you're giving up on soccer. But then I really understood like, honestly, our facilities are, these facilities are way better than top division Norway. We had like eight different soccer fields to play at, two turfs, like it was, it was crazy. So I watched the team train, um, said hi to the guys, got into the locker room. By the way, <laughs> an unreal locker room, like three TVs. Uh, you had your own little, like, what do you call it? Like a seat with where you could hang all the stuff, your own locker room. And uh, nice showers. It was just like, I wasn't used to, used to it to see like how professional it looked. And then you had all the athletic trainers, the medical stuff. You saw like you had ice baths, hot tubs. You had absolutely everything. Um, after that, I met with a strength coach. We went through like he showed me the program for the team, like what we usually do before games, practice. They always like got warmed up by the athletic um, athletic coach. Um, then watched the practice, it was good. Um, the day bef the day after a match, so it was like uh, very easy. And then I uh, got invited up to the office of the coach. We had a good talk. One of the reasons why I really liked Syracuse was that both the head coach and the assistant coach was from Europe. That made a huge impact on me. And you know, they said what I wanted to hear. And uh, after the meeting, I got with one of the guys, uh, another Norwegian, Sandra Norheim, um, who had been there for a year. Um, and he just showed me the rest of the, the campus. We went on a basketball game. I think it was like 30,000 people at the game. It was like crazy. And then we went down to the, to uh, like the, where you eat that stuff at the campus and it was like six, seven different restaurants to choose between. And uh, we ate, got back and just relaxed with some of the guys on the team and some field hockey girls or something just to like socialize. And uh, I just really felt the vibe. And I remember the day after when I had another chat with a coach, he showed me some clips from the previous season they had and he showed me some clips from uh, my games and we're like, we think you're good at this and this. We think you need to improve this and this and we can help you. So uh, I told him after a meeting, I'm, give me the pen, I'm ready to sign. Well, after discussing uh, a little bit scholarship, obviously. Yeah. I we, remember talking about that part uh, yeah. in, the, in the back room. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, that yeah. was, uh, yeah, that's a part of it. You have to, you have to be uh, confident and hard on that as well. Like, you, you know your rights. So um, I was happy with the deal and uh, signed two days after I got back to campus at Garner Webb and was ready to just finish up the semester and uh, get my ass over to Syracuse. I think blown away is the, yep. is, is the expression for that trip. Uh, it was... Uh, I, I understood like it's this is something else, and I I really felt connected to that place, and it gave me a good feeling 
So uh, that's what I told my dad as well. Like, I don't even have to visit Virginia Tech. I want to go to Syracuse. It's uh, you can see the differences between a, a smaller, they call it mid-major schools like mm -hmm. Gardner Webb, which is a smaller school um, versus a, like a big school like Syracuse. You talk mm -hmm. about thirty thousand in the basketball arena. I mean, it's it's a big dome. It's indoor. It's crazy. Um, so, so uh, you know, in terms of the resources and all the the money that filters through, it's a bigger school, more sports, yep. American football, basketball. You know the revenues and, and all the money involved is just uh, a bit different. But I want to talk briefly about Garden Web because you're a bit of a YouTube sensation, <laughs> I would say. Because uh, yeah. one of your teammates, he set up this YouTube <coughs> channel. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was the assistant coach of the women's team uh, who had a YouTube channel. And uh, one day he, he took me to the side and asked, can you do a day in the life for me? Where you just put the GoPro on your head and just film everything you do. So I said, yeah, sure. It was a game day. Uh, yeah, and I remember just doing doing it. It was like nothing special. It was uh, it was uh, just a regular day, good day. Uh, we played the uh, home at uh, against uh, UNC Asheville, I think. Uh, scored one goal. Just it was a good day. But uh, I had no clue that it would blow off like it did. Because uh, we're looking at it, and we 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 like this video because it shows people what it's like uh, during a day and and mm -hmm. how campus looks. And you you don't know that I think if you haven't obviously stepped foot on a campus before. And you know Syracuse was a huge campus. Garden yeah, Web yeah. is a much smaller campus, but here you get a good vibe like you said mm -hmm. you get a good vibe uh to show that to people and as we speak almost eight million people have seen that youtube yeah, it's clip crazy uh, and you you people have asked you hey you're that guy from youtube yeah, uh, yeah i've yeah. seen you <laughs> i like playing games for syracuse some guys came up to me and like hey aren't you that guy from garner web and the the day in the life and even my teammates at syracuse had seen it so when I was visiting them, they were like, hey, aren't you that guy? So it's it's fun. I even played a game in Norway, and some guys come up to me and were like, hey, I've seen your face before. Like, uh, were you in the States? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, I think we're seeing a video of you. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it really took off. We, we have probably shown it to half of uh, the <clears throat> soccer population in, yeah. in Europe that we've spoken to. Uh, so it's we're, we're part of the... 7.8 million ah, views at, 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 at this time. But, uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a YouTube sensation. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it is fun to see. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's I remember, it, obviously, the decision-making on, on figuring out what's the right school for me, it's much easier now with these tools, the multimedia, the, you can see pretty much all the games, how they play, um, how campus looks, the virtual tours, you know, not everybody yeah. can just fly out and, and visit. It's not that easy. No, uh, it's not easy at all. But this is a very good good yeah. way, to, way to go about it. But it's changed drastically from just over the past 10 years on how schools and recruits now, because they have so much more to offer on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, etc. cetera. But um, yeah, let's go back to Syracuse. And you had a, a bit of a tough start to to your time at Syracuse, that spring season yeah. uh, was a bit tough, but uh, we're not going to touch in too much detail to that one, but things weren't going as planned for you as you were, you know, coming over to Syracuse to score goals and, and that stuff sort of didn't happen and you missed a penalty and it was tough. But then the 2019 fall season started again where it really matters to score mm -hmm. goals and the first game, yeah, yeah. Um, the spring wasn't wasn't the best for me. Like it was, I kind of felt like uh, a lot of pressure coming in because everyone was like, "Oh, that's the guy who's gonna score the goals for us next season." And like, not that I care a lot about what people are saying, but things starts to matter when it doesn't go well. Like I, my the first practice I had with Syracuse is one of my best practices ever. But after that, I don't know what happened. Like, um, kind of lost a lot of confidence, and 
yeah, it wasn't just it was tough because the level was was much higher, the tempo was much higher, the work ethic was way harder. We had like longer practices, harder practices. Uh, it was just uh, kind of just needed to get used to it. Uh, compared to at Gardner Web, my first year I couldn't play games, so I kind of got that year to get into stuff. Uh, but I remember coming in uh, after the summer of um, 2018. Yeah, 18? Yeah, yeah. my first season at yeah, uh, 2018, Circus. yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and we had uh, some exhibition games and scored in two of the first one. And like, finally starting to get that good feeling, you know, starting to show people at the team, like, oh, okay, this guy can actually play. And then it was the first uh, the first game that uh, mattered, the first season game. We went down to Oregon State on the West Coast. And uh, I remember Tayshon Buchanan got the ball on the outside, chipped the goalkeeper. It was like a 50-50. It was going in or out, but the defender came and could have put it away. But I just throw, threw myself out there with the head and scored, uh, scored it with my head. And I just... It was like... 40 pounds just threw off my shoulders because I was like, okay, now I can relax. I yeah. got that first one. Now it's going to score more goals. We won that game 2-1. Um, gave us a good good feeling. And then uh, the next, the week after, we played Hofstra at the first game at home. My first game at home. And I uh, scored after 15 minutes there as well. And I felt like I was unstoppable. I was doing well at practices, like everything was going well. Um, and we won that game as well. But then suddenly I got put on a bench the next game. And I was like, what's going on? I scored two games in a row. Like I'm flying. What's No, just rotating players. Wasn't that happy about my performance. <laughs> so I was like, all right, fair enough. But then I struggled more getting into the team again and it started to wear on my confidence but kept on fighting and got back into the team and uh, got to one or two more goals and got some assists as well and I felt like it was a decent start on my ACC uh, my ACC turn um, road and uh, yeah it was tough it was something else because the level was much higher I'm not gonna lie about that um it was something else. But um, it was a decent season. Yeah, so you made that transition. Um, and your last season in college soccer in 2019, because you were graduating in, in December 2019, so you had this uh, last four months uh, to finish strong. Um you ended up being team captain. That yeah. says something about you as a character, locker room, and what you brought to that team. You, you had assists, you had goals, but is, did that mean more for you than maybe other other awards you've gotten along the way? Yeah, definitely. It's something special when like the guys on your team are voting for who to become captain, and you know, like it's not just the coaches who picked you. Um, and like when they, when they told us, because we were every, everyone was like voting for two captains and they told us on the practice, um, right before the season was starting. And I was a bit surprised because I wasn't the guy who, who played the most or like wasn't the best player, but I was kind of good at seeing people and I feel like, um, uh, feel like that was maybe one of the reasons because they they knew they could come to me if it was something about the coaches or playing style or I was uh, not afraid to confront the coaches and to just uh, yeah it is is hard to explain but it was uh, it's probably one of my proudest moments as a soccer player because Syracuse is one of the best programs and it's um, it's an honor to be named captain at uh, such a great university. Yeah, you should be. 
that's that's a big deal. Uh, it means a lot, and you also followed with the Dean Fote Award, which is uh, an award that is giving given annually to uh, the Syracuse player with the most positive influence uh, on the team's attitude. Uh, I think it sums you up very very good there, Severin. Thank o- you. Always positive. Always. Uh, seeing the because you know you can see in your college recruiting process you know you you always manage to stay positive uh, so that you end up graduating with a fantastic degree in economics from a a highly ranked international school like Syracuse and yeah it was some bumps along the way but you've you've always had a positive mindset yeah it was uh, it was nice getting that reward because you know it shows that you are able to to stay positive even if it's hard you know when you're a captain struggling a little bit with playing time and seeing the guy who plays instead of you scoring goals like it's a dilemma like should you be happy because he scored a goal for the team or should be should you be mad because you're gonna play less when he plays more like when he scores so it was it was uh, it was tough but at the end like um it was it was a good experience you just have to you have to be mentally steady and just believe in yourself and just just be a good teammate you know it it comes to a point where when the team matters more than your own career and i figured out early on that like uh on my last season that um i'm not gonna get drafted so why not just stay positive and try to get the most out of it? Score as many goals as I can, be um, and be a be a leader when they actually want you to be it. So, yeah, I felt I did a did a good job of that because it's not it's not always easy to be a leader when you're not uh, a starter, like on every single game. Um, but uh, it felt good when you got that reward because it shows that people have seen seeing what you've been through and seeing that you could be strong even if it's even if it was hard well, kudos kudos yeah. i like it yep and with economics degree mm-hmm. you uh, you graduated in december uh four and a half years after you started uh, done with the american adventure and then coming home uh, i remember you called me and said hey uh, been interviewing for this job uh, I need to give a reference. Do you mind being my reference? And I said, Oh, of course. And I, you know, yeah. I've known you for a long time. So I remember they, they called me the day after, um, and uh, they wanted to know things about you. And I said, Well, I don't know him from a, you know, work setting. It's obviously straight out of school. If it is a very good degree, but I, I know the the character. So it was more of a character reference. And I think you you were offered a day the the, the job the day after. Yeah, <laughs> we spoke because I, I gave them a good reference. Obviously, yeah, because I can almost just say, "Hey, I think you're getting a uh, solid human being here uh, to join in your team." Um, so that that was also fun to kind of say, "Okay, well, back back home, real life starts." <laughs> Happy to play a little part in uh, you finding your first uh, uh, job in commercial real estate, kind of following the, in the footsteps of your dad mm-hmm. uh, and. Um, yeah, using your degree for something that you really enjoy. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you gave them good response. <laughs> that, uh, that means a lot. Um, yeah, it's it was. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do when I was done at Syracuse. I was like, should I keep on trying to become professional, go to a team at like not the highest level back home, but try second division, um, or should I just be happy with? with what soccer has given me so far. Uh, if you ask me, I've accomplished actually everything I wanted with it. I played at high level in Norway. I have played at the highest level in the US when it comes to college. And I felt like it's it's time to grow up. It's time to get a job, uh, a real job, like, um, and step down from the soccer part because it's given me so much that I really think it's it's almost impossible that soccer back home is going to give me more than um, compared to what US has given me. So I f- I like had a good conversation with myself, figuring out that 
what is the furthest step I can go when coming back home? And I figure like the my best option, like if I max it out, what would happen? I could play in Tipoli or like Elite Zedin. That would be my main goal. And when I look when I looked at it, that g- didn't give me so much satisfaction like to to keep on trying. So I figured out like, you know what? I'm ready to step down, play for fun, uh, and just get a real job and try something else. Because soccer has soccer or football has been a part of my life since I was born and will still be an important part of my life. But I'm I was twenty, twenty four, twenty five, I'm like I'm ready to grow up. So when I got this job opportunity, it was like no doubt. Like this is a good opportunity and uh, and I remember in the interview, the director, like, I told him about my my journey. Uh, luckily for me, he was a football player before when he was younger. So he he knew the type of personality you need to have when you're a soccer player. And he he liked that I was able to combine soccer and education at the high high level because then he knew my time management was good. Because it's not easy when you have to combine two, two call it jobs, uh, at the same time. So uh, yeah, I was uh, I was really happy when I got that job, and obviously going to America played a huge part uh, of that because it makes you stand out compared to other people. Yeah, because I, I think a lot of people wanted to get that job that you got, so it's uh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> so I was it's very nice to to, to be the, the chosen one. Uh, but finishing up Severin uh, in what has been a really eye-opening talk about, especially kind of the the demands of of the different types of uh, levels in, in mm-hmm. the U.S. system, because you've experienced both and and the challenges along the way and how to overcome them. But if you were to give advice to to other uh, think about yourself as an 18 year old uh, thinking about college what, what what's important to do before one making the decision to actually try this mm-hmm. and two when you actually get there what is key um, I think the key is for taking the like if you if you're not sure if you want to go or not remember that if you go over there you don't need to give up on your dream of becoming a professional athlete because the systems over there will help you become a better become better at your sport 100%. And um, if you don't know what to do with your life just 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 take a chance. What's the worst thing that can happen? You go home after 6 months and you've been 6 months in America like you it's it's not like the biggest risk of your life. Just just do it. As Nike says. <laughs> One of my favorite slogans, just do it. Have it on my uh, um, background on my to-do list. Uh, right. Some of it is quite tedious stuff. Well, just, <laughs> just do, do it. it. Just do it. It's amazing. Yeah, and when you get over there, be patient. Like, it, it doesn't come for free. Like, it's hard in the beginning. It's hard for everyone. It's a new language. It's a new way of studying. It's a new coach. It's a new team. It's a new culture. Be patient. That's my biggest... Uh, yeah, tips. And I think we can conclude because I couldn't have said it better myself. No. Thank you so much, Severin, for taking uh, your time to be here and chat with us. It's Thank been uh, great. Thanks for having me and for being allowed to share my story. <laughs>